in 2003, my son Trevin uh, was five and a half at the time. We were at Disneyland for a family vacation. And uh, we went down to Disneyland doing the Disneyland thing and he gets a cold. You have four kids, your kids get sick, it's never fun, but you kind of develop a rhythm for when they're gonna bounce back. And uh, he wasn't bouncing back. Uh, even on the ride home, you know, we couldn't cheer him up. He got real listless, real, like, had no energy, and his skin color was different. So we take him to the emergency room, and they weren't real worried. They did some blood work, and they, they gave him a bunch of fluids, and, you know, they said he was dehydrated. And, and maybe they were going to look at him overnight because there were some possible signs in the blood work of some hepatitis possibilities. And, but it was like one of those, whew, okay, everything's fine. I mean, nobody was panicked, so I was to go home and uh, and be with the other three girls. It's not, I mean, I'm not home for five minutes. I get this call that, hey, uh, on the way to the hospital, your son's heart stopped. I run in and, and the, the first thing I remember seeing is a team of doctors um, all hovering over my son and, you know, trying to resuscitate him. Shortly thereafter, Dr. Rush out said, oh, great news. We had one nurse that was able to keep his heart pumping enough for us to put this ECMO unit on him, which is a heart-lung bypass machine. Over the next, I want to say, six to eight hours, it became, but he can't stay on this unit here. He has to be transported. All the medical transport units for this machine are in Iraq because we just started the war. He can go to Stanford, he can go to the University of Michigan, but we can't get him to either. My great friend drove us in the Suburban behind the ambulance, and it was the worst two and a half hour drive in the history of the world, because every bump he went over, we weren't sure if he made it. And now he's in ICU. He's on this heart lung bypass machine. Uh, we set up what they called Camp Trevin uh, at Lucille Packard, and with so many people that just loved us, they basically just stopped their lives. I mean, that's where I. So many people laid down their lives, um, in a sense, to love on us and to care for us in this time. And, and uh, he was on this machine for 40 days at Stanford. my life is when we found out that we had to take Trevin off life support. We were staying in this little back room, these cots at Lucille Packard. We went back there, we prayed together, and she goes, can you leave me alone for a little bit? And I said, sure, and I walked out. I've never heard a, a, a scream of more pain than I heard from her. It was like through two walls into another room, and she was crying out to God. I was so amazed that she had the maturity to be willing to scream out to God. It's horrific, and I, I'm not here to say it's not, but What's equally awesome is that we have a God that um, volunteered that for his son on our behalf. I mean, people say, why would you believe in this Jesus? Like, come on. And, and I, the cynics, and I, I get it. And I simply say, you have no idea 
I've experienced a peace during the greatest time of loss any parent could ever have that is so real. I mean, truly, I feel like it washes over me at times. Thank you.